They're coming for us. Get them. Get them. They're coming in hot. I got one. I got one. Don't get cocky, kid. But it's a Pop Bros podcast. What do you mean it's a podcast? You haven't been you haven't been shooting? They're all over the place. Well, no, they, but they've got all sorts of good shows like Pencil and Ink Reviews and The Guy Huddle and Players vs. Podcasts. I mean, was I supposed to? Yes. The, 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 what? How many podcasts do they have? There's tons. You got other ones like the Accidental Wrestling Fan and Take Aim Outdoors. That kind of sounds like we should make podcasts, not war. What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we are speaking the language of bromance. But Sean, from what you've told me, this week we're speaking the language of romance. But romance? Like a robot mance kind of scenario? We're speaking the language of robot mance. Bot, bot, mance, robot, mance. So, Richard, we are, if nothing, a fan of, you know... Sex, right? We talk about it every now and then. And technology. And technology. Richard, I found a guy that is basically saying the future is going to combine the two, sex and technology. It's a marriage made in heaven, made in techno heaven. <laughs> it's a marriage made in a warehouse with lots yeah. of other machines. Why didn't, you ha- why, didn't, why didn't I see this at CES? So, Richard, the, the gentleman who has been talking about this is futurologist and inventor Dr. Ian Pearson. What does it take to get the job of futurologist? Is it kind of like a philosopher? Maybe. What do I need to put that on a business card? Probably just, you know, the nine ninety nine. you have to go to whatever creates those cards <laughs> and say futurologist. <laughs> what do you do? I ponder future things. <laughs> yes. What do you, what you got now? Sex robots. <laughs> well, he's got us there. Yeah. That's I've a, seen Westworld. That's the future I want to live in. <laughs> Better than the Matrix. So Dr. Ian Pearson uh, basically has said that the future of sex and te- technology, technology and, the two, and how the two things will soon become even further entwined. So these things are going to couple themselves like, I don't know, like. Like things that couple? Yeah. Like what humans <laughs> will be doing with robots. What I'll be doing with robots. So this was during an interview. Uh, he made you know numerous predictions uh, for the near future, but he said that humans, this is what's interesting, will have emotional and casual sex with robots by 2030. Emotional? So I want to know, like, what's what's emotional and casual? Like, are, are these people going to be going out, like, the bars? Like, there's going to be robot bars? <laughs> Worked in the Jetsons. <laughs> can, I, can I buy you a pint of oil? Oil can! Hey, sailor, I've never seen you here before. Thank you for coming to the robot. I get the whole, you know, sex with robots thing. Like, I mean, I'm not saying I get it, get it, but I understand it because, you know, it's I to me, I would think it's for it's for, you know, guys that have a lot of money and zero confidence like robots. Robots are a sure bet because then I could just clicky clack on my keyboard (laughs) <laughs> and the robot likes me. I can't do that with the real girls. I can't go clicky clack on a keyboard. Well, it's it's probably just it's uh it's more of a less emotional investment. I mean, but see, but you said emotional. Yeah, he did say emotional and casual sex. Ah, uh, so that yeah. So you're like you're sitting there snuggling with the robot. Yeah, <laughs> that was the most amazing night ever, Stephen. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, crap, I didn't do the voices right. <laughs> uh, and he also said so that ro- human-robot sex will eventually overtake human-human sex by 2050. So we'll prefer the robots. Yeah, so by the time we're in our 70s, Richard, human-human sex is going to be like a, a novelty. You're going you're yeah. gonna to go lay in bed with your wife. You know, it's like, all right, well, it's, it's our five-year reu- anniversary. I'm pretty sure when I'm 70, it will be anyway. Yeah. Hey! I mean, Picasso this? had kids into his, what, into his 70s? So, you have I mean, no, Picasso. Oh, did he? I think so. So there's that. I could always, I could, I mean, you know, he's a painter. So I don't know what that means. 
And then going forward, he said that, uh, and this is just kind of all in the very first part of like what he's thinking the future will be. And again, this is uh, an article on Breitbart.com, B-R-E-I-T-B-A-R-T.com. Oh, Breitbart. Oh, oh, Breitbart. <laughs> I, I, found this, I found this article somewhere else that led me here. So I, this is the only time I've ever been to Breitbart. Uh, <laughs> Breitbart. Breitbart. It's going to overtake human human sex because they're going to link the nerves, brain, and computer, or they're going to link the nerves and the brain to the computer. So eventually, it'll allow people to record and replay sexual experiences. Do it like that one time. <laughs> Message for a. Well, and that and going forward with that, so it will feel the sexual simulation of the partner in order to become a better lover. So the, the computer is going to learn what you like. But don't people do that? I mean, well, I mean, so if if a computer, if the if the sex bot could get into your mind and be like, okay, I know you like this, it's like, no, I don't like that there. I don't like that there. It's like, listen, we're synced up. It's okay. I know you like it. Okay, <laughs> go go. The safety word is banana. <laughs> You're um, not going to use the safety word. I know. No, but I'm saying, like, I guess the point I'm making is that. So so what you're saying is through a course of encounters that the robot is going to learn your preferences and your non-preferences, right? Yeah, it's going to sync up. So basically it's going to be like your browser history. <laughs> but that's just like people. But people are like that. You know, kind you of. sleep with the same person over the course of time, they're going to know that, you know, sometimes sometimes you like you go with a little, you know, check the oil situation. And, yeah. Sometimes, you know, you're feeling frisky, you're a little drunk. Yeah, let's do a finger. Why not? <laughs> I'm adventurous. Oh, the finger's too much. The finger's too much. Ah, uh, use the index. <laughs> Are you crying in the shower again? Yes. Is it because I use the thumb? Yes. I feel dirty. So, but my problem is, is I think that, see, that rules out the whole experimentation thing. And there's some spontaneity that goes with that. I'm just, I mean... I'm just throwing that out there because, you know, like sometimes you're sitting there and you read something or you see something and you're like, oh, I'll give that a shot. At least that's how I am. So this is almost like 3D printing. You know, like you go online, you find ways to 3D print. You'd be online be like, oh, I can have my sex bot do this. Put the flash drive in, download it, <laughs> stick it into your sex bot. And guess what? Oh, I said listing, not fisting. Oh, <laughs> damn typos. <laughs> I know you're into this. Tell me you like it. <laughs> See, that's the other thing is like, I'm uh, like, I, I consider, and this, okay, so I'm just speaking, this is me, speaking from my heart, okay? I am a very auditory person. Like, I like to hear things. Yeah. And so, uh, it, I, I guess, like, you know, if you hear certain things, then you know you're doing a good job. If you hear other things, you know you're not doing a so good job or such a good job. So you're with the robot. The robot's programmed to make noises, and the robot can give two shits one way or the other what you're doing. It's not like the robot's enjoying any aspect of this whatsoever. So it's like birthday sex. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly like that. <laughs> oh. No, babe, I was really into it. It was great. That's why I called you Jason Momoa. I thought <laughs> I thought you liked your last birthday present. See if I could ever get you a gift again. <laughs> but, I mean, really what Bastard. you're doing is, like, you say emotional and casual. I mean, at some point you know this isn't a real being. Exactly. Just... That's where the whole emotional thing, like, it kind of breaks my brain a little. I, and and I'm and it's not because I think that people are or that people won't form a sentimental attachment to things. I mean, we do that now. We form sentimental attachments to things. Yeah, I guess there is a comedian that talked about his PlayStation. If it had a sex hole, it'd be all that he ever wanted. I mean, can we not all fall in that category? Right? This is a real PlayStation. All right, babe, you can leave now because daddy's got what he needs. <laughs> that sounds creepy when you say it that way. Oh. Oh, I don't care. Hey, Get PS3, out. you weren't supposed to judge me. But yeah, we're, I mean, are, and, and the, and, okay, and, the, and if we're talking about emotional, like, like, look at it from the robot's perspective. There's no emotion involved with the robot whatsoever. Oh, no, None. not at all. 
any sort of any sort of emotion that that robot exhibits is pre-programmed. And in and this is me in my head, I would know that. Like you'd meta you you would totally meta think that whole situation and be like, well. The robot's doing what <laughs> I programmed it to do. The sex bot said it loved me, but deep down I know it's programmed I, no. to say that. But I still like it. <laughs> tell, tell me you're off kilter and you're not you're not on your programming right now. Oh god, he is crying again. Tell me you're self-aware. Tell me you're <laughs> self-aware. You kill me. You kill me to show me you're self-aware. <laughs> Isaac Asimov was right. <laughs> well, I think the most interesting part of this too, besides that that little part, is the fact that you can replay your sexual experiences. So I don't know if like it's gonna get into your mind and somehow dig like super deep so you'd be like, hey, I remember that time that my wife and I had that little rendezvous in the back of the car. Like, is it gonna like replay that for you so the current sexual experience you're having? Is that experience? God, I hope not. I hate being in a car. You're all cramped, small, tight space, back of a Volkswagen. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, is it is it gonna like re like let, let you relive that experience so you could go back any point in time? So like that time that you and I went to Chicago and we got a little drunk Shh. and uh, we watched that movie. Yeah, we watched Game of Thrones. Game of Bones. No. Bones, bones, bo- 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 bones, bones, bo- bo- bones. <laughs> but okay. So, okay, using that example, every, like, okay, so is it going from the experiences, is it going from experiences that you recall with other people, or is it going from experiences that you've had with the robot? That's what I don't know. If that's It doesn't really See, say that, in this to little me, paragraph. I think, I think, I think it has to be the latter. Because there's no way you could, because the only way, like, can you, could you, do you think you could adequately describe an encounter you've had with another person well enough for a, another human being to code that into a robot? Well, the only and, way I, I would think that would be possible is, like, some kind of, like, futuristic Matrix thing where it's, like, it, like, plugs into your brain and downloads that that movie. And you know the Stop bad thing. Stop crying, about- sir, and tell me what happened. <laughs> well, the bad thing about that, too, is, like, I guarantee, like, you're going to be like, oh, my God, I remember that time. I was a total rock star. They, she, your sex bot puts it on the screen. You're like, oh, God, that's the most horrific thing I've ever seen. What is that face? Look at my face. <laughs> that's a terrible face. I wouldn't sleep with me with that face. Look at <laughs> I'm not even in the mood now, sex bot. <laughs> and that's the other thing. Okay, let's say you have to, you know, relive or describe whatever encounter you had with another per to to another person, so that way that person can code that into the robot. How self conscious would you feel trying to explain something like that to a coder? And who? And do you want to be that coder? <laughs> Maybe. Like, and then she put the glove on, and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. Type, 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 type. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put a comment here. Infinite loop, and go. <laughs> Black box that code. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so basically, so this is kind of a question and answer in this article. And and, and here the, the person asking says, hey, you know, you were saying that virtual sex would become as casual as people browsing porn today. Uh, and they bring up, like, VR headsets and the Oculus Rift and things like that. And if we'll start seeing like sex specific headsets and gadgets, and Which he, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if you've seen any of that stuff, but that stuff looks amazing. I've never, I've never like obviously never tried it because you know poor. But well, you've mentioned it before, and I don't, I, I've never seen any of. It. I've never looked it up yet, but yet being the key word. <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean that's kind of what he mentions in here too is that like this is going to be something for like the super rich at first like the super wealthy are going to be the ones to to use this stuff first. Okay, now we're, we're going to stop this right here because John, let's say you let's say I'm me and you're you, but you have you know your net worth is fifty million dollars. Which one of us do you think is going to have a harder time getting the girls? Oh, yeah, not me, because even if I do, I roll up in my, you know, brand new big ass boat. Yeah. 
I don't know if you've seen the internet, Richard, but there's a lot of girls on boats and bikinis. Just happens. Yeah. I think they come with the dealership. I think they do too. And then they're all and then they're staffed by old, like super old, big guys with that are way too tan. Yeah, like that's the staff, right? Those are the guys that don't own the boat, right? No, no, am I? Do, am, I'm backwards, aren't I? I'm backwards. The super tan guys own the boat, don't they? Typically, yeah. Oh. And they're married to the girl somehow. Or, uh, you know, they look like they're young enough to be their daughters, but they're married to them. It's really weird. They're married to one of them, and then all the rest are like their friends that are yeah. mooching off the... And they're, but, but they're collectively, as a clique, they're mooching off the, the old dude that's tan. But the old dude doesn't give a shit because he's old, and he's like, oh, fuck it. Yeah, I'm going to die soon I, anyway, I got, and I hate my yeah, kids. I'm going <laughs> to die soon. <laughs> I'm not leaving any money for my bastard children, so... Here I am on this boat. This is the June Playmate. What do you think I got her on the boat for? Not a conversation. I can program her into my robot. <laughs> so he was kind of going, it's like, I don't really think people are going to be wearing these whopping great headsets in 2030. So, you know, like the stuff that you're kind of talking about that's out there today, I, I, it almost sounds like he thinks that's just a fad. Which, you know, you think of things that you could get caught doing. Could you imagine having a VR headset and all these gadgets hooked up to you, like hanging out right, in the living room? You walk in, it's like yeah. a scene at a lawnmower man. <laughs> You walk in, just somebody in like a, like a, like in one of those, in, in like one of those, uh, oh, I can't think of what they're called. But like they're holding on to, the, like, it's like almost like a big cage, and they're holding on to the sides with a virtual reality headset on. Babe, this isn't what you think. I was, I was in, I was in a field. I was in a field of flowers. I was just walking in the field. Oh, I'll get my stuff. So as he's going in here, he's talking, basically it sounds, so like the part we talked about where, you know, you could relive a sexual experience, it sounds like it's basically off of an actual sexual experience. So they would somehow figure out how to program these nerve type of, uh, oh, just nerve technology. So it'd be like, oh, okay, when you had sex with this person, here's the sensations that you had. And basically allow you to relive that. So it would be almost like you're laying there watching this situation happen. And this do this, you know, system that you're hooked up to is making your body go into all these kind of convulsions. You're like, oh, God, yes. And also, what if they fuck up and they just like ramp it up too much? <laughs> your penis explodes. <laughs> like, oh, God, yes, 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 yes. Oh, Oh, that was the best one I've had. Oh, God, why is there so much blood? <laughs> oh, is this a user error? Or is it <laughs> best $30,000 ever? <laughs> okay, so in that instance, you actually probably do have to describe things to a person because that person, somebody's got, somebody has to write the code, is my point. Somebody has to. So, how would you like to have that job, Sean? Well, I don't think everybody it's... where everybody sits and tells you their most terrible, weird, fucked up sexual fantasies, and then you have to generate that into computer code so that way they have something to jerk off to. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. To me, that's that's the equivalent of the of of the guy that goes into the booth with the mop. Oh you know uh, I mean? yeah, at the sex like, shop. You don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to be that guy. Nobody wants to be that guy. And I think that if you're the if you're the guy that has to code all this stuff, you don't want to be that guy. Like you just know too much. You know everybody's deepest darkest secrets. You just get home from work. <laughs> First thing you do, pour yourself a shot. How was work today, babe? <laughs> I, I I don't even want to talk about. It. I've seen some things. I've heard some things. I just, I, I can't. Well, I was thinking I could put the kids to bed later. No. <laughs> nowhere near. I am nowhere near. Gonna finish this bottle off and hopefully drown in my sorrows. <laughs> no, but it sounds basically like uh, instead of it being so you going in and telling somebody this and they have to code it, they would implant you almost with all this technology. So they'd put some kind of like sensories in your eyes so you could record it visually and then they'd have hookups so that you could actually it would like record your uh uh like physical emotions and physical oh, okay, I nerves see. going off at so this point. So basically so <laughs> okay. So 
Now, so so here's my question. Let's say that let's say you signed up to do this and you sign the paper. You're at the hospital. Sean's at the hospital and he signs the paper. He's like, all right, I'm going to get I'm going to get we're just going to you know, we're going to hook some things up to you and then it's going to read your response levels and things like that. So you're telling me that the experience that they're going that they're going to base this all off of is going to be you. personal experience. <laughs> You go in, you go in after this all hooks up. It's like, okay, you know, have a few experiences, you know, worth like four to five, come back in and we'll have the readings. And you come back in like, uh, yeah, so this is going to work. We need readings longer than 27 seconds. <laughs> we didn't get an adequate sample. <laughs> Those are my personal best. I just doubled my record. <laughs> Number three was the best. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, so I'm saying, so... So the experience that they're basing this off of is going to be you lying flat on a table in a hospital or wherever, wired up like your, you know, Weapon X. You're wired up like Hugh Jackman in a Wolverine movie, and that's that's what they're going to base all this off of, like with all this cumbersome equipment. Yeah, I don't know if I just... like. I don't know about you, but if I'm if I'm if I'm trying to if I'm trying to get frisky with the lady, I don't like slip on a Nintendo Power Glove and I'm like, <laughs> "Hey, here we go!" Like that's just not how it happens. And if it did, I'd be like, "Why am I wearing this? <laughs> this is so cumbersome." Keep smacking her head with the cord because it's not hooked in anything. <laughs> Let me pull out the zapper. <laughs> <laughs> I've always had a Tron fetish. <laughs> no i'm i'm guessing ideally so this is all supposed to happen in 2030 by 2030 by 2030 so being being a futurologist he is seeing into the future richard so he's like nostradamus so is nostradamus a futurologist probably yeah i would assume so his his word is cool though his word like you know what we need sex robots <laughs> <laughs> nostradamus is awesome maybe those were the notebooks he hid like in the bottom shelf He's like, one day there'll be windmills, <laughs> that power. Lost Nostradamus prophecies. <laughs> they open it up and be like, page one, sex robots. <laughs> Coal-powered sex robots. Coal I can get behind that. <laughs> the future is full of flying vehicles and sex robots. So now I'm picturing this robot... With like steam coming out of like <laughs> gaps in it, and then behind him is just a guy with a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> you have to hurry up and finish before the discharge. What's the discharge? <gasps> <laughs> oh, it hurts! It hurts! It hurts so bad! Oh, I should have just got the clap like everybody else. It's so warm. But but yeah, I'm guessing he's thinking by 2030, like all these uh, technology pieces to gather this data. And this uh, sensations is going to be small enough that I think you could just get hooked up. It'd be like, um, you know, those people who are are deaf at birth and they give them that little ear thing that they can hear. Uh It'd be something like that. It'd be hooked up on your head somewhere. Look like a cyborg, but you'd be like, I don't care. I, you know, all the, all the stuff that we're doing right now, it's getting recorded. Right. I'll tell you what though. I think, I think there, like in that instance, everybody would know you're walking around with a hole in your head that they use to like jack in people walking by be like hey i know what that guy's doing tonight <laughs> don't don't sleep with that guy he's going to record it <laughs> but i mean okay so think about that so let's say this all is like actually recorded like that so you visually record what's going on here you're you're the equivalent of the dude that hides the camera in his bookshelf you're the gone you're the gone wild guy yeah like now, now in the future, Richard, in 2030, when you and I are hitting up the singles clubs, because the wives are going to leave us by then, it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm surprised that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> she had some bags out in the the living room. I don't know what that was about. She, says she was staying at her mom. <laughs> her mom's not even in town this weekend. <laughs> I don't get I don't get things. <laughs> I said I'm doing a podcast, and she was excited. She's like, "Oh, I'm going out with my mom." She left me, didn't she? <laughs> she was so dressed up and pretty. All because I had this hole in my head. <laughs> but now that's something you have to be scared of. Like, I mean, I guess as a dude, you're probably like, oh, yeah, she, you know, I'll totally you know, be her fantasy. You know, it had a quit amount of data would happen. But <laughs> baby, I'm going to rock your data drive. Oh, I finished too quick, didn't I? 
Well, you're under a gig, so <laughs> storage space still at 95%. <laughs> I could install Windows 10 on here like five times. <laughs> <laughs> and get more pleasure. <laughs> but so that's that's kind of 2030. So 2030 is just allowing you to relive those uh, those great sexcapades you've had, which, again, is kind of scary in its own because I don't know if I'd want to relive any of my sexcapades. Is that because you're embarrassed by them? Yeah, pretty much. Or is that just because... Well, see, like my thing is, is like I said, like what kind, what kind of experience are you gonna have, like when you're like decked out, like you belong, like you said, like you belong in Tron, when you're wearing like a headset and like gloves and. Well, yeah, you know, you're definitely not getting anything at the bar, especially when this stuff first comes out. You're gonna be like the dude with the first cell phone. <laughs> Walk in in a bodysuit. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to get lucky tonight? <laughs> Ladies, drinks are on me. <laughs> Please don't all don't all form up at once. <laughs> God, Todd, every weekend you come in your goddamn bodysuit and you leave alone crying. <laughs> yeah, but at least I get good data from that. It's like you don't take anybody home. I know. It's all by myself. So, but, so your favorite. So, so then you go to the hospital, and they're like, "Okay, looks like um, we've reviewed the data, and it seems like the best experiences are you are by yourself." The videos of um, you looking at the the bathroom floor with it sounds like it, crying. I mean, that's that that's crying? kind of weird. It here it sounds like crying, and it not is. like not like silent. Like <laughs> it's like it's like you know, girl with a skin knee crying. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> I hate myself so much. There's a lot of crying and self flagellation. I don't. Is this. I mean, do you want us. Should we discard (laughs) this? I mean. Do we move this to the recycle bin? Let's let's just keep that as a backup just in case. I feel like my odds are going to be better this weekend. <laughs> all right, so Richard, that's 2030. That's you walking in the bar with all this stuff or, hooked up to you. Or you go to the bar and let's say, okay, let's say you don't wear the bodysuit. And you go to the bar and you pick up a girl and you get back to your place and then it's like, hang on, let me slip into something a little more comfortable. <laughs> you open the bathroom door, and you walk out in this bodysuit <laughs> with this headset on and a VR headset, and be like, all right, I'm ready for love. What happens if like halfway through the battery dies too? You have to be worried about that. <laughs> boop, boop, Shit, get a charger, get a charger. We gotta charge up. Boop, plug me uh. in, plug me in. You know this. You can't move in this suit when the battery dies. Hey, where are you going? Oh, you took my wallet, didn't you? Oh. <laughs> oh, call, hard. Siri, Siri, call mom. Insufficient battery life. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna starve to death. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. This seems. I mean, like, I get the idea of it. And I'm not saying I, I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the concept of it. Like I totally get and understand the concept of it, but the way the way it's being described to me, I don't see how I don't see how you're going to get genuine data if that makes sense. Well, I mean, so let's so the only way I could think this would work because I I think if you go out to a bar and try to pick up a girl and this is our guy and this is what you're going to do, they're going to be like, yeah, no, I, I don't want to be part of your like creepy, you know, you know, yeah, your creepy girls gone wild in 3D. Yeah. So you're the only way you're going to be able to get this to work is with like a significant other. Right. So you're gonna have to be like, hey, you know, honey, let's get these things hooked up. That way, you know, when I'm out of town, you're out of town, you'd be like, oh, I want to go to our best hits album and, you know, check out some of our best sexcapades. But even then, like, you you try to get your wife to get into this, and if I try to get my wife into this, like, there's no way. Even no if I way. was really into it. Like, just, just be like, no. no. We could spend no. 40 grand on other things. <laughs> like what? Name five. Name five right now. Uh, let's see, a oh, new car. That's a, that's um, a good list. Let's see, we um, need a landscape. Um, <laughs> I really want to get that new dress. You know, we could go on a really nice vacation. Name five more. <laughs> <laughs> that's... Well, I mean, or 
we could get this entire setup. See, okay. Now this this is how I could almost see it kind of working. Now instead of having a bodysuit and blah blah blah, like let's say you're in a sort of what if it's like that that like that like pix like pixel technology or like that <laughs> so like it's like motion it's like mocap. <laughs> so you walk in, you got all <laughs> so these red in. balls stuck to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for love. I don't know if I'm ready to make a video game or make love. <laughs> Maybe both. I think it's both. You think you think we're making love? I'm taking the one ring to Mordor. <laughs> don't get distracted. <laughs> Stop humming. <laughs> so Richard, this is like 2030. So that's that's like what? 20 years away? Less than. Less than 13 years away. Yeah. So that's coming up. But as a futurologist, he's looking even further in the future as well, right? He's looking all the way to 2050. If that's and only he says, 13 years away, I got to build up much better sexual experiences. <laughs> like ones that I don't end up disappointing in my, disappointed in myself. So by 2050, he's basically saying that, okay, you know, they'll have these kind of replaying sexual experience things. But now in 2050... You're going to have actual sex bots. Okay. So wait a minute. So, so, and so I thought the robots thing was happening in 2030. So you're telling me in 2030, it's just going to be like a, like a, like a setup harness, like those 4d theaters almost, you know what I mean? Like the 4d theaters where like you get in like this thing and it's like a, you know, they put like a headset on you, like a VR headset, and you have the, you know, and you get moved around and you feel sensations. Like if it snows in the movie, then it snows like in the theater or whatever. It's going to be like that. That's what like you're telling yeah, me. That's what in 2030, 2030 it's going like. to be like. You just hook up into like a, like a harness kind of thing, which again, how do you explain that one? Because people know what it's for. Yeah. They're going to know. <laughs> it's, made, it's, not, well, it's not something small. This is like the big screen TVs of the future, Richard. You walk in, be like, yeah, we got the 37 inch. So do I. <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just going to. Oh, could you imagine if that was like commonplace, though? Like you come over, be like, oh, I see you got the uh, the Sex Harness 3000. That, I hear that's a good model. Well, you know what? We're going to go grab something to eat real quick. Can I? You mind if I give it a shot? I, I, I was contemplating, I was thinking about buying one. Yeah, give it a shot. Jump in, you know. Here, let me cue up one of my favorites. This was uh this was our uh, our honeymoon night. It's like, can I have a wet nap first? You know, just <laughs> make sure you clean it after you're done. <laughs> best. <Ew. laughs> I love the idea of like you have best ofs. So you know, it's like you know, here's here's you know, here's where the wife and I went on our honeymoon. It's like a Spotify like, uh, that's, playlist. <laughs> that's that's not your wife. I know. Uh, it's it's encrypted. Uh, you gotta have a super secret password. Did you just type one two three four? Uh, six nine. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of kind of thing an idiot would have in his luggage. <laughs> so yeah, that's twenty thirty. So in twenty fifty, uh, he's saying that we're actually going to have android style robots. And Richard, another thing you're going to have to explain. Oh yeah, <laughs> it just walks out. You come out of company. <laughs> oh, somebody like somebody sits on the remote for the robot, <laughs> and then it goes. <laughs> So he sits on, you know, like you're having a party or whatever, like you're having a party at your house and somebody comes over and be like, oh, where do we put our coats? Do we put it in the closet? Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, why, why is there a robot in your closet? Um, that is, uh, my Roomba. That is, <laughs> it sucks up. Whoa. Why does your Roomba have a 14 inch dildo? On? <laughs> uh, well, it's European. Yes. And. Roombas to avoid discrimination in the workplace should be anatomically correct. Who dodged um, that one? <laughs> <laughs> or, or like you know, like it's okay. So it's it's family Christmas. It's family Christmas. Your parents are over. Guess what, Sean? You accidentally got the remote for the robot stuck in the couch cushions. And mom sits down on the couch. And accidentally, like, butt dials sex robot. <laughs> so then the door, so then your closet door's open and out walks this. Ro- <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I am here for your pleasure, Sean. <laughs> I'm here to love you all night long. All night long. All night, all night long. Is this <laughs> your mother? Oh, she's a lovely lady. You she go back to your here. closet. <laughs> Let's see. So as he's going on, he's saying that um, people will be spending a decent amount of money on these, Richard. Basically about the same as a decent sized family car. That's the price what these are going to be going for. So these, so, you know, say what, six to, or are we talking about a new car or a used car? I'm guessing new car. So you're looking probably like 15 to 20 grand yeah, for your sex bot. Say, 12 to 12 to 17, probably upwards of 20. I wonder what the mileage is on a sex bot would be. I don't know. I bet that thing depreciates as soon as you, <laughs> as soon as it walks out of the lot. Try to hassle with the the salesperson. It's like, listen, you know, throw some new tires on that bad boy, and we have a yeah. deal today. <laughs> what can I do to put this sex robot <laughs> inside of you today? You know what? That would be uh, a used sex bot salesman would probably be the best job ever. <laughs> No, go ahead, jump on it, take it a spin around the block, see what you think. So can I, I mean, can I test drive the, is it, oh, sure, sure, um, just get, give me a second, I need to go get the keys. <laughs> um, I need a picture of your license insurance card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, could you imagine trading in your old sex bot? Like, how sad would yeah. that be? Or, or, you go to Craigslist and see people selling their their old sex <laughs> robots. <laughs> No, my mom, it was it was my mom's. She only took it out on Sundays. <laughs> it's the deluxe edition. You know, it's got the 24-inch rims. <laughs> I can't see myself using it after my mom died. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get you a good deal. We'll get you in here. We'll get you we'll get you processed and we'll get you on your way. Yeah. I'm just going to <laughs> this is my trade in <laughs> uh, and they and that's the uh, okay so so like you said tw- you know somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to twenty thousand dollars do you come home and you're like babe i just made the purchase of a lifetime <laughs> i financed a little bit you know it's only gonna be you know if you know we're only paying about you know 300 bucks a month but check this out Beep. She's like, oh, my God, you got the brand new Mustang. Listen, I know I said no. I know you're going through that midlife crisis, but, you know, you deserve that nice car. It, oh, my God. What oh. the fuck is that? <laughs> is that a robot? I named her Cindy. That's my sister's <laughs> name. <laughs> that That's what came on the paperwork, is it? babe. I, I, I didn't. I totally. Oh, my God. Really? I forgot about that. Well, I mean, it's already programmed in, so I can't, <laughs> I can't really change it. Now, I mean, it would just undo the whole thing. <laughs> I have to sleep outside. <laughs> Come on, Cindy. No, Cindy's staying in the house. <laughs> so, okay, so it's an and so you said Android like. So, are we talking? Are we talking like like? Is it gonna feel? Is it gonna feel like a person? Or is I it mean, gonna be like? I mean, because. Cause I'm sorry, like robot, sex robot, whatever. Like if it looks like one of the characters from iRobot, like uh, yeah. I can't. I just can't. I get turned on when I see those two. Oh, what? Um, nothing. I was, I was thinking about the opposite thing you were thinking about. So that's awkward. Oh, you froze for a second. I know. <laughs> But but basically, like what he's saying here is like if you're gonna be spending that kind of money, you are gonna find one you find attractive. Just like you have a wide variety of cars, you're gonna have a wide variety of robots to pick from. See again, do we should we really be comparing this to cars? It's kind of sad, isn't it? But yeah, you you come to work the next day, and Greg, you know, two cubicles over, comes in with his sex bot. And he's like, damn it, he's got the deluxe edition, four wheel, dr- it's three wheel drive, all fucking fully loaded. Damn it. See, there you go. That's a, that's a term that you do not want in your sex when you're shopping <laughs> for a sex robot. Fully loaded. <laughs> like, no, no, I don't. I think I'm good. I think fully fully loaded will be the definition of slightly used. <laughs> you just. I mean, this is. There's so many business opportunities with this. So you know, you get the you get the the you know off the 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 showroom floor 
version of your sex bot. You know, it's it's you know, it looks good. It doesn't look bad. But then you can add the aftermarket modifications, you know, <laughs> upgrade in a few areas. You know, you you get that turbo in there and you know, you upgrade the 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 memory a little bit. Put a spoiler on the back. <laughs> A uh, tattoo right above the butt crack might as well be a bullseye. Yeah, neon put neons like you know on the on the feet. I don't know. I don't know if that's. I mean, is that, that's something that you probably wouldn't want to get. You know, that's something that probably wouldn't get stolen. Like someone's like, I'm gonna go steal his sex robot. <laughs> but it, well, you know, there's another good business opportunity. You know those uh, things you put on your steering wheel. I can't remember what they're called, but they keep people from stealing your car. Like the club. Yeah, you have a club for your sex bot. <laughs> it's just a dildo you shove inside it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, password protected. <laughs> your password's password. <laughs> the password is. It has remote start, so it's ready when you get home. <laughs> God, these things are so In the creepy. winter, you got to warm it up. <laughs> but basically what he says, like, people be able to design their own robot robots, right? They're sex bots. And I don't know why everything he picked is more of like a, uh, like somebody who would, like, clean your house. Like, he says, home servant, butler, or a maid, or whatever it is they're buying it for. So... So basically, like, nothing's changed from, like, okay, so it's 2050, so nothing's really changed from, like, 50 years before when the rich old guy was sleeping with the maid. It's just now the maid is a robot. Yeah, so now instead of giving his money to a person to be with him, he's giving it to a robot that, you know, Joe at the sex bot card, the sex bot dealership gave you. gives whole new meaning to that entire Arnold Schwarzenegger controversy because now he sleeps, he's, he's sleep, instead of sleeping with the maid, he's sleeping with the maid, and he's a robot, or she's a robot, and he used to play a robot. Blah. I am a machine. I am a sex machine. Sex machine. But that's a good point. So at this yeah. point, you know, if we have sex bots that can do all these great things, artificial intelligence is going to be getting to its peak, right? So this will be getting close to human levels. Well, now, Richard, these sex bots are going to start forming emotional bonds with people. So basically, it's like, it, so then, so everything will just cycle back around and then we'll get turned down by robots. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so basically, instead of just, you know, birthday sex with the wife, it's birthday sex with a sex bot. Yep. I'm going out with all the other girls. I'll see you on Tuesday. But my birthday's yesterday. I am very tired right now. Your battery's fully charged. <laughs> Yawn. <laughs> I have a virus. <laughs> you had a virus for the last three nights. What's going on? I have I have McCaffrey'd the shit out of this out of your entire <laughs> system. Corrupted file. Rebooting. No, don't reboot. <laughs> Shutting down. Do you want to turn on in safe mode? <laughs> no, going into sleep mode. <laughs> this is the worst. Twenty thousand dollars for this. Could have bought other things, like that machine that you hook up and it relives all your sexual experiences. It was half the price. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. See, later on, the whole like like you walk in and somebody has the whole harness thing set up. Be like, oh my god, that is so twenty years ago. You know what the new thing is now? robots okay so sean i'm not saying you would but let's say you have a robot okay do you put clothes on the robot because to me i think i think it's slight like i mean creepy regardless but i think it's slightly creepy like you open up your closet and there's a naked <laughs> it's like keeping a mannequin in your closet you know what i mean yeah well you probably want to put a robe or something on it it's, okay so you do that, like, then in your head, how do you feel now? Because you just dressed a robot. Like, you're, tra like, right there, you're already transferring some emotion into the robot. Because you're like, oh, God, no, no, just be decent. Be decent. Well, I mean, I'd probably have to get, like, the, the kind you'd order online. So it'd have to be like, look, this sex bot folds up and goes under the bed. So that way it's discreet <laughs> and out of the way. <laughs> Or it ended up being like a treadmill. So you have it in the corner of the room where you just hang stuff on it. Hang clothes on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get to it someday. Not today, though. Oh, I'll wait for January. <laughs>
Uh, so going forward, so we, you know, talking about this robot sex. So I mean, so think about this too. So basically, the question is like, is human human sex going to be nulled completely? Like that could be the end of the human race right there. Now, yeah. I'm gonna go with no because if you give me the if I have the option between a robot and a live person, I'm gonna go with the live person. Like I just like. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being prejudiced against robots at this point. Okay, old man, but... don't get with the times. <laughs> Back in my day, we used to have sex with women, with real women. Like the good Lord intended. Not these, not these dumbass robots. I don't understand you kids. Your damn sex bots. Look at you. You put clothes on it. Why are you putting clothes on the robots? <laughs> on the damn robots. Why are you putting clothes? He's Canadian. Why are you putting clothes on the robots? <laughs> Back in my day, we just looked up porn on our smartphones. Yeah, whatever, old man. Once you use your, once you use your hand like a degenerate, why don't you? <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting to think about because I know I don't know if you've seen this recently, but I don't have the article in front of me. But they talked in uh, like China and Japan. I think it's Japan. Maybe it's not China, but. Uh, like dating is pretty much not a thing anymore. So I don't know if it's I don't know if it's anything sexual, but basically people aren't dating in Japan. I think it's Japan. We'll say Japan because I can't remember for sure. Well, China, I think right now is just go- China right now is going through a population boom because they originally they had restrictions on uh, kids like, you know, your family could only have so many children, but they lifted that. So. Well, you had to get a license. Yeah, they lifted that. Like, originally, you had to get a license for so many kids or whatever. Because I don't know if you know this, Sean. There's a lot of Chinese people in China. Uh, I know it's in the billions, right? It's it's over a billion. A lot of people. A lot of damn people. A lot of people. In a very confined space. But basically, like, in Japan, I think it's... They, they don't have... They're like, dating's not a thing anymore, so they're just marrying friends. So it's like, well, we're out of college... You know, uh, next step is we get married. Maybe it's like a, it's like, it's like those packs that you make with your, you know, with, with like your college friend. Oh uh, yeah. Like, if we don't find anybody in 10 years, then we'll just marry each other. Yeah. To, well, you only do that so you could get lucky. Yeah. I mean, that's why the girls did it with me. They're like, listen, I just want to get a little touch, kick this dude to the side. He's been talking about marrying me since like freshman year. <laughs> we just told you to get married, right? Yeah, sure, whatever, dude. Yeah, you'll be a great backup. Did I say backup? Well, I meant it. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell. I could tell you really meant I'd be a backup. There was some emotion <laughs> there. I wish sex bots were real. <laughs> that is the person that's going to invent the robot. Yeah. But that's the thing is like, so if if, if these sex bots are prevalent. And at a very decent price, I mean, I don't know, maybe it would make human to human sex less likely. But the thing is, so if you have this at home, Richard, right? So your wife's like, hey, I'm going to go to bed. And you're like, oh, you know, you want to, I'm, I'm going to stay out here. You know, she's like, you sure you don't want to come to bed with me? No, nah, I'll just, I got some stuff I need to do. You know, I'll, I'll be in bed later. <laughs> I'll be in the office. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I think that'd be more embarrassing than getting caught doing anything else is coming in and seeing the sex bot. And also, yeah, like, it's not like you could, yeah, okay, see, here's the other thing. It's not like when it comes to an actual robot, like, it's not like you could hand, it's not like you could do that discreetly. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not like, oh, I'm just going to eke one out real quick. <laughs> Did you just say eke one out? <laughs> Yeah, that's the most horrific way to explain (laughs) self pleasure. Uh, I tell Tim, hey, don't come in the bathroom when to eke one out. She's like, I, I I don't know what that means. I don't think I want to lock the door. (laughs) Make sure it doesn't eke out here. I guess. (laughs) Uh, Gross. (laughs) But you don't think this would be a danger to to human relationships becoming less and less. Do you see yourself sleeping with a robot? What? See, okay. No, and here's why. If we're talking about just straight up, ple- just straight up sexual pleasure, right? Like, experience aside, 
I'm just talking about sheer convenience. Like what to you sounds easier and more efficient to do to spend twelve thousand fifteen thousand dollars on a robot keep it in where where who knows where in a closet <laughs> in the box because you want it to be mint condition who the fuck knows you keep it somewhere and then on the off chance that you're alone in the house for you know five minutes then you have to push a button and then ha- and then have your relations with the robot and then get the robot put away when you could just as easily just like use your hand and well, be kinda, done. That is funny. It's like you get five minutes, you try to power it on. You've got the older model, so it takes a little bit to boot up. It gets froze <laughs> on the opening screen. It's like, hello, sh- uh, on. Oh, it's buffering. I'm it's buffering here. Oh, God, Wi-Fi just, is me, slow. Okay, hang on. I need to let's update the drivers. And, and then <laughs> wife comes home early. It's like, were you going to have sex with a sex bot? I thought you said no. you didn't want to go to the grocery store because you didn't feel good because your tum tum hurt. <laughs> no, I I accidentally tripped the, the line and it kicked on. I didn't. I, I sat on no. the remote and I. Oh, you know, at least finish. <laughs> <laughs> I went to all this trouble. <laughs> I don't know. Can you? Where do you want to sleep tonight? Oh, I guess I'll sleep on the couch. I went to all the trouble to get her out. Can I at least like just, you know, five more minutes? Just don't 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 look. Just don't look at me. Just don't look at me right now. <laughs> just don't don't look at me while I do this. Didn't you hear the, the salesman, Todd? He said you got to take these out at least once a week. You know, you got to run them around the block. You know, make sure all the oils and stuff are going well. You, know, you can't just let it sit. It'll go bad if you no. do that. Exactly. Everything will just it'll seize up. <laughs> I knew a guy at work. He didn't use this for like six months because his wife. Didn't want him to take it out. You know what happened? Doorstop. That's what they had, Dolores. A doorstop. <laughs> $15,000 doorstop. <laughs> you want that? Do you want that for our family? I'll be damned if we waste $15,000 in this house. So I'm going to make love to my we sex We just bot. did, honey. We just did. <laughs> oh, Greg, I see you're back with your sex bot. Yeah, I need to I need to trade this in for a male male version. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were into that. Also, I'm in the market for an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So I guess through all this, Richard, are you a pro or anti sex bots? I guess is the I'm a I'm I gotta say anti. Like it just doesn't seem it doesn't seem convenient to me. It doesn't seem like it it, it doesn't seem better. It doesn't seem like, it just seems like a whole lot of production with not a lot of substance. Yeah. And I see it as almost like Westworld. Like, that was the thing that always seemed kind of weird to me. It's like making making sweetness to, to a sex bot. You know, in Westworld, that was just kind of odd to me to be like, hey, this not living thing, I'm going to do. Because it's not real. Because it's not real. There's no connection and and that's what and that's what I think is 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 the is the big thing is there is like even okay let's say hi, let's say you know even even like a one night stand okay something like that okay there's still some form of connection you have with who with whoever you're with mm-hmm. there's something there otherwise you wouldn't be where you are there's something even on its most even on a minimal basic level, there's something. With a robot, you know that there's nothing. You know that. There's absolutely nothing. That robot doesn't give a shit whether it's doing what it's doing with you or sitting in a closet. That robot could care fucking less because it's a robot. And you would know that. Yeah. And in a way, isn't doesn't that just, you know, I don't know. In a way, like, I feel like you're trying to mitigate your, I don't know, it's, I, I, I mean, you can't, I, I can't say that it's like you're forcing yourself on the robot, because like I said, the robot doesn't give a shit. But in a way, wouldn't you kind of feel that way? A little? Yeah, I think it'd be sad. I think the sadder thing is that it, it could almost become a commonplace. Like you said, you'd have these sex bot dealerships where literally you walk in, you pick which one you want to take off the showroom floor. Got Toyota stamped on the ass. Yeah. All right, we gotta we gotta license and register the sex bot. What do you want on the license plate? <laughs> um Sweet Love in 69. <laughs> Sorry, that's taken. Oh. 
All right, Richard. So coming to a close in our sex bot episode, do you have any Richard's closing thoughts? Um, I, I, I think I think I just said it, you know, like it's it's as real as you think it would be or as real as, you know, it would it would try to be at the end of the day. The whole thing would feel like a simulation. And that just doesn't doesn't jive doesn't jive with me. And no simulation beats what's up here. My mind's eye. That's romantic. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to have, I don't care about your bullshit romanticism. I'm going to have my sex bot do a little housekeeping. <laughs> Visit our website. We're at languagebros.com. Follow us on Twitter. We're at languagebro. Email us at eat the beaver at languagebros.com. Check out the LOB Army Intelligence Reports. Those come out on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe and leave a review on Google Play Music, iTunes, and Stitcher. And don't forget to check us out on the Pod Bros Network. The podcast site that is promoting sex bots? Yeah. Oh, right. we could could you imagine like a Pod Bros sponsored sex bot? It'd oh be like race God. cars. <laughs> 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 I don't know that Pod Bros sex bot would run real good today. Oh, we're taking oh look, Valvoline's pulling ahead. Uh <laughs> if you want to throw a little Valvoline's money. pulling ahead and KFC's giving head. <laughs> and if you want to throw a little money in our tip jar, go to our Patreon accounts, www.patreon.com slash language of bromance. Do we get a tier for a free robot? For our sex bot? We maybe. do that as a reward. Like, if you give us so much, we'll give you free... Ro- you, get a, you get a stamp on our uh, sex bot, so we'll put your name somewhere strategically on the sex bot. Yeah, on the forehead. <laughs> All right, well, is there anything else before I close her out? No, no. Let's I'm I'm slightly creeped. <laughs> slightly creeped. All right, well that's all the bromance we have this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I say we eat the sex bot beaver. I will eat the beaver. Buffering. Buffering. Hold. Sleep mode. Woo. Oh. <laughs>